Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech and a day or so ago, I went over all the new features that we saw on iOS 12, but since using it for a day or so, there have been a lot more features discovered. So one of those has to do with the iPad. There's a lot of different gestures that are on the iPad that hint at a face ID version of the iPad. And this is my 12.9 inch first generation iPad Pro or at least the 12.9 first gen. So if we turn it on, we can now swipe up just like the iPhone 10. We can use our fingerprint still, but we can swipe up. Now, just like we can swipe up on the iPhone 10, we can swipe up here and get the same thing. If you have apps open, you can swipe them away. Uh, maybe you want to swipe this one away, swipe them away very simply, just like you would expect on an iPhone 10. We also pull down from the right to get our control center now, pull down from the center to get notifications, and again, it's just like the iPhone 10 as far as that goes. Now there's a new section in the App Store. If we go into the App Store, you'll see down here, we'll scroll down, there's a new you might have missed section. So that's something that's new and instead of scrolling through all of your apps, you can just see what you might have missed that maybe they showed the day before or something like that. On the iPhone 10, when you wanna close apps, you can now just swipe them away. It's much simpler and easier. Another thing they've changed is for those devices that don't have 3D touch, if you go to the keyboard, you can now tap and hold on space and you'll get this same dialogue where you can move this around and do whatever you need to do as far as highlight text and things. You can do that by holding space and moving around, whereas before you weren't able to do that. Now with Face ID, they've made some changes. So let's go out here. We had a little bug there. We had some changes. We'll go to Face ID and Passcode. You now have the ability to set up an alternate appearance. So maybe you have a drastic change in your appearance or you want someone else to be able to unlock your phone. This actually will work and let them unlock your phone. It's been confirmed multiple by multiple people and multiple times. So you can set up multiple faces now just like you could before with your fingerprints. Now notifications get a couple options that they didn't talk about. Now they do group them automatically here, but now you have the option if you go to notifications, maybe you want to change your activity here for your activity monitor. Notification grouping is at the bottom and you can change it to be by app or off. So depending on what you'd like, you can change it to be more convenient for you. And that goes for just about every single app here. You can change it by app and off. Notes gets a couple different changes. If you 3D touch notes, you can now scan a document here. So you'll see right here, scan document is there where before it said new sketch. Also, you have some different options when you're in a document. So if you're in a document and you go to the markup here, you can change the color, but there's more options now. You've got a color wheel and the color wheel has more colors within it. So depending on whatever you wanna use, you can use, and it's a nice, simple new option. You also have the ability to change different things such as opacity of the ink or pencil that you're using and a couple different thicknesses of the actual lines you're using. So maybe you want it to change it and have a different opacity than you had before you have that option. Now Siri has some new abilities as well. It now has the ability to look up passwords, answer questions about famous people, food and motorsports, and also look up memories and photos. So you can ask it to look up a password. Let's try that. Look up my password for Zolotech. It will try and look it up using Face ID and then open your, your password manager and show you the password. So that's a new option under website and app passwords. You can also autofill passwords on different websites as well. So let's go out here. And if we go into Safari, there's a couple different options as far as your passwords are concerned. Now, those passwords in particular uh, will autofill under certain accounts. So maybe you want to go to Facebook and create an account. So now you have a new option to autofill a password. It helps you make a strong password, choose your own password. This is built in when you sign up for a new service such as Facebook or Twitter or any of those different services. Any website requiring a password, it will figure out and suggest it. And it's just a new dialog box here as well. Now, if we go back here, we do have some other options for Siri other than the passwords. We have some new voices, so let's go to the settings. Under voices, we have two new settings for Irish and South African, so that's added as well. Now, one of the new features with Do Not Disturb is bedtime mode. Now, if we dismiss this, you'll see we turn it off. It'll say 
whatever time it is, good evening or good morning, and it will give us some weather information sometimes and other things, but it's just a nice little greeting that they added as well. Now, one of the updates to Safari is favicons or favicons. So if you go here, go to tabs, now you'll see the little icons on the top here for the different websites. So you've got the little Apple, you've got Z for Zolotech, and they're all right there for any website that has that. Now, another feature they've done is with the keyboard. So if you're using a third party keyboard, you can now dictate text. So here we have Gboard. We can switch to Swift key and in the top we, top we can say apple.com and it pulls up Apple and we can go to that. We can use that on any app and it's built in. So that's a really nice update since you couldn't do that before and it really limited some of those keyboards. Now with the main Apple keyboard, you can also copy a link and Siri suggestions under Spotlight will suggest that you can paste it. I actually don't have this on mine, but for some people it shows that. Now another thing they've done is with music, you can also search songs now by lyrics. So maybe you have, here's one, this is an old Pearl Jam song, so uh, if you say Once Upon a Time, it pulls up once from Pearl Jam. It's pretty simple and straightforward, but you can search whatever lyrics you want and they'll show up as long as the lyrics are on Apple Music. Also, the artist page in Apple Music gets a redesign as well. So it's just a little bit nicer looking overall. Now there's also some changes to Control Center. If you 3D touch the camera, you can now scan a QR code. Now if you go into the settings for Control Center, there's some options for that as well. So we'll scroll down here to Control Center and then customize controls. And we have one for scan QR code. And we also have one for hearing. So if you're, you're hard of hearing and you have a different device that you can use for uh, either a hearing aid or a hearing uh, assistive tool, you can set that up here. I can use an AirPod and it sort of gives you an amplified version of, of everything around you to help you hear. You also have this for the QR scanner and it'll just open your camera and scan QR codes. So that's pretty simple and straightforward. Now in photos, you have a new section as well. The bottom of albums, you have different media types now so that you can see different medias based on videos, selfies, photos, portrait, exposure, and on and on. Then you have some other albums down here as well. Now they've made some changes to messages where you tap on the top here and you've got info, FaceTime, and audio. So that's pretty simple and straightforward. If we go to messages down here and want to type a message or share a photo, if we tap the camera, it opens the camera right up. Or if we tap this little button, it will open our photos up and then we can share a photo from our photo album. And it's pretty simple and straightforward, but a much cleaner interface, although a little bit tricky to figure out where that eye went if you're not familiar with it. Now, reachability has changed a little bit. If you've got reachability turned on to bring the screen down, you've got an arrow on the top and you can move it. It doesn't really do anything, but you have that ability to move it. If you want to move it for some reason, uh, you can do that. So it's just a little bit of a change and they may change that at the end. Now there's also some new settings for books and then there's hints of a dark mode that may be coming to iOS in some of the code and options for developers. So we may see that. I know we had the accessibility version before, but it doesn't seem to make too much of a difference. And there's all sorts of little things that you're probably going to find such as in Safari, there's different developer modes. So in here, you can go down and go into advanced and then experimental features for developers and things like that. There's all sorts of new little things hidden throughout and there will be more and more, but those are some major changes that weren't in the keynote and hopefully gives you a little bit better idea of what iOS 12 has to bring. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.